Ukrainian startup Strategy Force Solutions claims its unmanned motherships have carried out autonomous strike drone missions for the first time in tests against Russian targets. As Forbes analyst David Gambling writes, the development uses a reusable Gogol M aircraft that delivers two FPV strike drones to precisely strike targets up to 300 kilometers away. This approach increases the ability of small drones to strike soft targets such as parked aircraft, air defense sites, or infrastructure. A $10,000 mission replaces what previously required $3 million to $5 million in rocket systems, said the company's technical director, Andre. As gambling notes, this could effectively be seen as a working version of the long-range autonomous system the Pentagon is currently building, or the drone mothership recently demonstrated by China. By combining small FPV drones with AI mother drones, we can guarantee precise strikes, says Andre. Stratforce's key product is the Smart Pilot system, which uses a combination of advanced sensors and AI. LiDAR, a laser radar, creates a 3D map of the surrounding area and works in all lighting and weather conditions. Another key feature of Smart Pilot is AI, which combines data from multiple sensors to perceive the environment and recognize targets. This allows the AI to make decisions, plot a flight path and execute a mission just like a human pilot. Andre says Smart Pilot can perform missions autonomously, finding its way to a designated location and hitting targets there. It provides autonomous flight, navigation and interaction without GPS and without constant operator control. However, unlike Shahid, Smart Pilot is not limited to static targets, it is capable of landing and waiting for targets, as well as autonomous search in real time. The drones could land and wait at an airbase for aircraft to arrive or emerge from their fortified shelters. Or they could be left along the convoy's route, ready to autonomously attack when it appears. Andre says Statforce can currently produce 50 Golgol M mother drones per month and 400 FPV strike drones, but that will depend on winning military contracts. Feedback from test missions so far has been positive. It's like a video game. I just set up checkpoints, select targets and watch it work," said one tester. It's very interesting to watch from the coordination center. I would just like to increase the warhead and increase the range to 500 kilometers," says another. The transfer of units from the Donetsk region to the borders of the Sumy region may indicate a new military strategy of the Russian army. This was reported by the American Institute for the Study of War. It is noted that the recent demand by Russian President Vladimir Putin for the creation of a buffer zone by Russian troops along the interstate Russian-Ukrainian border, as well as the ongoing efforts to completely seize the territories of Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions, ignore Russia's existing restrictions and emphasize Putin's intention to expand his territorial claims. The report cited information from Ukrainian military analyst Konstantin Mashevets. On Monday, May 26, he noted that the Russian military command had recently redeployed units of the 752nd Motorized Rifle Regiment and the 200th Motorized Rifle Brigade to reinforce the Russian grouping leading the offensive in the north of Sumy Oblast. According to Mashevets, units of the 200th Motorized Rifle Brigade are operating near the Ukrainian village of Vladimirovka and in the village of Gordievka. At the same time, units of the 752nd Motorized Rifle Regiment have been operating in the directions of and Lyman since at least mid-2024. ISW noted that since mid-2023, they have recorded the participation of units of the 200th Motorized Rifle Brigade in combat operations in the Bakhmut. Chesavyar direction, which is a priority for the Russian command. The institute also received reports of Russian presence in Chesavyar as of May 6. At this time, experts have no further confirmation of the activities of these units in the northern part of Sumy Oblast, but will monitor further reports. Analysts have previously noted that the inability of Russian forces to break through Ukrainian defenses west and southwest of Chesavyar undermines Russia's ability to prepare large-scale offensive actions against the town of Kostyantinivka and the broader Ukrainian defensive line. 
The institute does not rule out that the redeployment of troops from the Chesavyar area indicates that the Russian command may be planning to delay the offensive on Konstantinovka. This confirms the current ISW assessment, Russia does not yet have sufficient operational reserves to simultaneously conduct offensive actions in several directions. The decision of the Russian command to withdraw troops from this direction may indicate an intention to simultaneously continue the advance in the Donetsk region and create a buffer zone in the north of the Chernihiv, Sumy and Kharkiv regions. The command may believe that in the northern part of the Sumy region, Russian troops have a better chance of achieving significant advancement than at Chesov Yar, the report says. ISW previously suggested that Putin likely intends to use the buffer zones in the northern Sumy and Kharkiv regions to justify expanding his territorial claims to Ukrainian lands beyond the traditional claims to the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. The Netherlands will send the remainder of the 24 F-16 fighter jets it had promised to Ukraine on May 26, Dutch Defense Minister Ruben Breckelman said on the Dutch broadcaster WNL. Ukraine received its first F-16 jets from the Netherlands and Denmark in 2024. The US-made fourth-generation fighter jets have been deployed to bolster Ukraine's sky shield and help repel Russian aerial attacks. We are also training pilots and technicians and sharing our military doctrines, so that Ukraine can build a modern armed force that matches that of the NATO member states," Breckelman said on air. Dutch Defense Ministry confirmed the shipment of the final batch of six of F-16 fighter jets bound for Ukraine. It is a nostalgic moment, because the F-16s were so central to our air force for decades. But now that we are saying goodbye after the transition to F-35s, I could not have thought of a better destination than Ukraine. Because of the daily Russian airstrikes, the F-16s are of vital importance to Ukraine. It enables them to keep Russian aggression at bay for us too. They have already saved lives, the minister said. The F-16s have a better overview of the battlefield and a higher chance of survival than the outdated Soviet aircraft that the Ukrainian Air Force flew. The Dutch Ministry of Defense emphasizes that the transfer of F-16s does not mean the end of the country's participation in the fighter jet coalition, which it leads together with Denmark and the United States. Apart from the Dutch aircraft, Ukraine has been promised 19 F-16s by Denmark, 30 by Belgium, and at least 6 from Norway. European nations have agreed to supply aircraft to help modernize the Ukrainian Air Force as they themselves transition to more advanced F-35 fighter jets. The F-16 aircraft are being provided within the framework of the International Fighter Jet Coalition, with some partners contributing training and technical support.